No way. You got to be kidding me. Oh my God. Okay, well, we're going to have to push this off the road again. Ugh. Hang on. Let's take the can home for a ride and see what happens here. So, uh, yeah, exciting. So far, so good. We're gonna see if we can get to the letterbox and uh, mail off this uh, unusable, <laughs> unusable for me, uh, float seat. So uh, that's gonna be our initial mission here. And we're gonna take it for a longer ride and see what we can uh, see what we can do. time I took the bike for a ride I thought I had it good I got about 10 miles and it died on me so uh, we're gonna take it at least that far today and just see what happens so there used to be a mailbox right over here yeah it looks like there still is that's good nice all right okay All right, I think we're actually gonna stop the bike here because as a bit of a test, bit of a test, I'm gonna stop it and restart it because uh, it's one of the things that wasn't doing too well before. So we're not too far from home. So it's a good, good time to do it. Let's see if we can get her in neutral first. Here's neutral, nice, let's turn her off. All right, okay, let us pop this uh, Bing 84. Uh, seat valve, seat valve, <laughs> float needle into uh, into the mailbox here. Good old Canada Post. Okay, we're not going to show the address because I don't want to show this guy's address on there, but I'll, I'll put it upside down. You can see my address. I don't care. Put it inside here. And it is off to North Carolina. Alrighty, let's get back on the bike. And uh, let's hope it starts back up again and we'll go for a bit of a longer ride. This is a test ride. We've done a lot of work on the bike here, as many of you know. We've, uh, we've got the original tank on there, um, but sealed it, uh, cleaned it all up, and uh, I've got Caswell's sealing it, got the new decals on it, got brand new fenders front and rear. Uh, we've done all kinds of work on it to get it to run good, and that's what today's test is about, is to run it and see what happens. So Now we shouldn't need the choke. <laughs> Because we were just running it, although not for very long, so it should just start up. Oh, and it does. Look at that. You see, it's so nice when things work, you know? It's so nice when things work. No cars are coming. That's nice. Triple check. Quadruple check. Alrighty. What a beautiful day.
Okay, we're gonna head down here. This is the road kind of towards Pit Lake. But we're not gonna go all the way to the lake. We're just gonna go and kind of cruise around some of these back roads, although it's uh, it is a little bit of a busier day today. We're going to uh, try to uh, avoid traffic as much as we can and just enjoy riding the Can-Am, the 1975 Can-Am. So what an amazing bike this is. You know, this is one of the, <laughs> one of the iconic motorcycles from my youth that I, uh, that I really have uh, always wanted to own uh, right from when I was, uh, gosh, probably about 10 years old. And uh, never, I never really had the opportunity to get one, but I was really lucky. I, I picked it up, actually I bought it off of the original owner, which is kind of, kind of amazing actually. The guy bought it uh, brand new in 1975, the guy that I bought it off of, super nice gentleman. And, uh, He'd taken good care of it. He'd enjoyed it a lot. Cosmetically, it needed a fair bit of work. Mechanically, he kept it in pretty decent shape. Although I've had some struggles with it, especially with that uh, Bing carburetor. I've uh, been having some major overfueling issues, which I'm hopeful that I've resolved. I'm hopeful that I have with a lot of help from uh, the Facebook group on uh, on uh, the Can-Am Facebook group, as well as uh, other other forums and that sort of thing, where guys, uh, probably some of the guys watching this video have given me some great help, so I really appreciate that. And uh, the goal here today is just to see if uh, we actually have resolved the overfueling problem. You know, I did a whole bunch of things. Initially, of course, just took the carburetor apart and cleaned the heck out of it, ultrasonically cleaned it, and, uh, uh, you know, I've cleaned all the jets, uh, you know, everything that you would do with any carburetor, put it back together, check the float height, made sure it wasn't leaking fuel, at least I didn't think it was leaking fuel, um, yada yada, and yet she would still overfuel, and, uh, geez, what was that guy doing? You gotta be careful, man, I tell you, people are crazy. Uh, anyways, <laughs> um, and, uh, so anyways, I wound up uh, doing a whole bunch of other things that I resorted to actually uh, putting a new float in it. Uh, I polished up the seat, like the uh, float seat, really good, um, and polished up also the, the hard tip needle that I have. I did buy a hard, a, a new, uh, <laughs> a new needle uh, for it, but unfortunately I bought the wrong one. Uh, stupidly, I bought the uh, rubber tip needle thinking that would just work better, which typically they do. But what I didn't know is that uh, they're a completely different design on the Bing for the hard tip. Like the, the actual body of the float needle is different. I mean, the, the one I bought with the rubber tip on it would not even fit in the, uh, in the seat. It was too big. It was a weird shape. It's a kind of triangular shape where the uh, standard hard tip one I have is sort of a square shape. Anyways, uh, so I just polished up the seed and put, polished up my old needle, put it back in, put a new float in it. And the other thing that we did, and this was a tip from a lot of you guys, was to check the choke rubber. And I did that, I put a new choke rubber on. I actually did that the first time when I thought I'd fixed it. But, uh, uh, but I have a feeling I was using the wrong kind of rubber. Rubber, rubber, oh, I'm kind of in the wrong gear there. It was first still getting used to this bike. I've not ridden it hardly at all. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll edit that out of the video. Um, and, uh, but anyways, uh, I went and changed the, uh, the rubber on the choke again this time with a uh, softer uh, rubber gasket material that I have. And actually I've on order uh, some nitrile rubber, one eighth inch thick, which uh, I didn't have, I've actually got something else in there at the moment, which I'm not sure how resistant the fuel is going to be over the long term, so I'm going to change that out. But between all of those things, I'm hopeful that I've cleaned, I've, pro I've solved the overfueling problem. So uh, that's what the purpose of this ride is. Last time, we made it about 10 miles and then it just died. So uh, irretrievably died from overfueling. 
Uh, and uh, so uh, we're just going to see what it does this time. And uh, so I'm going to take it for at least 10 miles and give it a go. I have the uh, I have my uh, my girlfriend on standby who's going to come and rescue me with my truck if, uh, if the worst happens. Last time I didn't make prior preparations and wound up having to use uh, DCAA and waited for about two and a half hours for them to come and rescue me. It wasn't very good. So hopefully today that doesn't happen. I have to say the bike sounds a lot better. The one thing I did do, and I may need to change this, maybe you, know, you should probably not change too many things at once, but the one other thing I did, because it was overfueling, is I changed the uh, the needle height. It, you know, it's supposed to be on the uh, second notch from the top. And I changed it to run a bit leaner on the, uh, there's another guy crossing the line. People are looking around, they're not looking at the road, I guess. Um, but anyways, I, uh, I, I put, I dropped the needle down one notch. So I've got it on the very top notch of the uh, of the needle at the moment, uh, and I'd be interested in you guys commenting on whether that's a problem or not. Is that going to have the bike running too lean? Or it seems to be running really nice. I gotta say, I uh, I know that's leaner than maybe it should be, but it seems to be running really well. Um, you know, the original. I have not changed out the uh, the jets. Or the some would call it the emulsion tube, but the yeah, whatever you want to call it, but the main jet, the emulsion tube. I've not changed those out. The emulsion tube, but the part I'm meaning is the part that the needle slides into, uh, metering the uh, metering the air. Uh, and I've not changed those out at all. So they they undoubtedly have a little bit of wear. Although this bike, I'm not sure you can see it on here, but it's only got 2,400 uh, miles on it. Uh, and those are original miles. I, I know that because I, again, I bought it from the original owner and talked to him. And a very upstanding gentleman, and I'm sure he's very, very correct to this is the original mileage on it. But obviously, there's a bit of wear on those parts. So, you know, not a lot of wear, but you know, I'm guessing that having it on that top notch doesn't matter too much. But leave me a comment. Let me know. Uh, <laughs> let me know. Should I put it back to uh, it? normal position on the second notch from the top i don't know i don't know really don't know yeah bridle's not too bad eh i adjusted a little bit before we took off seems to be good Just a beautiful day for a ride. Really quite enjoying it. I put, uh, you know, I've done a bunch of things to this bike. Uh, I did put new mirrors on it. Uh, the mirrors that I got here, they're sort of a, an angular shape and actually there's the exact same mirrors that I put on my KLX uh, 250. And if you haven't seen those videos on the KLX 250 uh, review, uh, it might be fun to go watch those, kind of cool quite different bike than this although it's also an enduro but an enduro four stroke and 2019 with fuel injection so quite a bit different than this but in any event um uh i've got the same mirrors i, I put them on my klx too although my klx didn't come with these these are just cheap amazon mirrors but i absolutely love them i just love them they cost uh geez what 25 dollars canadian something like that which you know in u.s money is just about nothing and uh uh, they're very well made. They stay in position, which is really good. Everybody, you know, obviously that's a big deal with mirrors on a motorcycle. A lot of times are rattling all over the bloody place, especially cheap ones. These ones don't. They just stay put. And uh, they've got a good look to them. They've kind of got that angular look to them. And uh, more functionally, a really great viewing area. So that's one thing that we did. The other thing, I put the new, new Magura uh, perches and levers on the bike as well. And, uh, 
and they're really good. I did that on the advice of a lot of you guys. Although I gotta say, the and the clutch lever really does make a big difference because that was my complaint is that the clutch was hard to pull and the guy said, hey, put the Maguro levers on there, make life a lot better, and it does. The, the point, the, it, it does work a lot better with uh, the Maguro levers. Um, on the on the clutch side but on the brake side i've got pretty small hands i don't know if you can see that on the on the video but i've got pretty small hands and uh uh it's uh it's a long reach uh and uh the way i've got the brake light set up i need to have it pretty much there the brake light would be on all the time so i'm not too sure what i'm gonna do about that uh, i would like them closer so where i can grab them a little bit easier but uh We'll be okay today, anyways. It's all the part of, a, of what a test ride is, right? Is you uh, finding things that you want to change or adjust differently. So, those comments until I get back home, eh? What do you figure? By tempting fate? Uh, so far, this is pretty much the same ride. In fact, this is the identical ride that we did uh, last time uh, where the bike uh, died. I didn't actually film that one. It was just my own test drive, but this is exactly the same route. Minus, minus the post of the box stop, but we didn't stop to mail, uh, mail a letter last time. But other than that, this is pretty much the same route that I went last time. And, uh, I made it up to uh, the stoplight that we're going to get to up here and then it, then it crapped out on me. So anything that we get past that is bonus time. So we'll see. It's kind of funny that I made it this far last time though. And you know, you'd think you'd make it this far. You know, it's roughly speaking about 10 miles uh, where it died. You'd think going that far, you know, you'd think it'd be golden, but... Uh, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't, and you know what I think it was? I mean, if I really had to put my, I mean, obviously I changed the float, did everything. You know what I think it was? I think it was actually that float, that choke plunger that was leaking. Uh, leaking air, I guess. Um, yeah, feel free to correct me on that. But in any event, when it's in its home position, it was leaking. And it was still fueling through the choke circuit a little bit. And over time that 10 miles it just you know flooded the engine out so that's my guess uh, but I could be wrong it could have obviously been the float and float height too which you know uh, hard to know really I think we're gonna pop her in neutral here if we can pop her in neutral oh she died no way you got to be kidding me really Let's hope that this is exactly where we got last time. You gotta be kidding me, really? We'll see. Um, no way, you gotta be kidding me. Oh my God. Okay, well, we're gonna have to push this off the road again. Ugh. Hang on. You gotta be kidding me. This is literally exactly where I got last time. Well, actually, I got a few feet more. I actually got to the stop plate last time. What the bloody hell is going on here, guys? What the bloody hell? Okay, guys, well, I pushed it back. I pushed it back to uh, the, the next street and uh, gave it a few more kicks and I got it going again. So was it my own paranoia? <laughs> I don't know. It uh, didn't seem to want to start right away. You'd think it would want to start on the first kick, but uh, or first few kicks, it didn't. And even when I got back here, I had to kick it a few times. I did not use choke at all um, to start it, purposely knowing it's, well, at least I'm like 90% sure that it's overfueling is the issue. So 
We're gonna continue with the ride and see what happens. I mean, wherever I get stranded, I get stranded. I, I you know, I've got uh, my rescue team on standby if need be. So, I'm gonna take it down the end here and back down this little. Oh, and she dies. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell's going on there? Oh, and you know what? Oh no, that's just me. Let's see. Okay, well, let's try giving her another kick. It's the damnedest bloody thing. That is the damnedest thing. Okay, kick her over a few times. No. No, she doesn't want to go. What the hell is with that? What the bloody hell is going on here? That is the gosh darndest damn thing. Okay, as you can tell, uh, <laughs> I probably should shut the, the camera off now again because uh, very confused, very confused. Okay, let's uh, let's continue on, get off the bike, and see if we can get this thing running again. Well, you know what? Uh, I did restart it, but unlike last time where I went, I took time to get my gloves and uh, you know my helmet and stuff back on. I decided, you know, I'm gonna shut it off, and then I'm going to. Uh, try starting it now and uh, see if she starts I'm hopeful that uh, it just starts and away she goes um, and then we'll try to ride it back but I don't really know what's going on the one thing I know I was talking about over fueling but the one thing that goes through my mind is I wonder could it be that I have the float height set too uh, too low and there's enough fuel in the float bowl doesn't seem too likely does it you saw how I was riding earlier so I don't know I don't know I'm very confused very very confused so see if she'll start no yeah she's running let's not dawdle let's just uh, try riding it alrighty this is a dead end so we're gonna turn around up here I'm just before I actually go out on the road, just want to see if it's going to run at all here. Well, I guess I should have gone down there. Maybe we still can, eh? trust it gosh I don't know I guess we just keep going it's almost like the idle might be a little bit low maybe I got the idle too low We're going to try to artificially keep it running here at the stoplight because I really don't want it to die here again. It's no fun when that happens. It's times like this that I just hate stoplights, you know, I just want to get going. So, oh, I see I've got my mirror whacked. I guess I did that when I was moving it around. Oh no, she fucking died again on me, fuck. Well, let's try starting it again. Ah, 
God damn it. Okay, I guess we get off the bike again. I guess we're gonna just take it home. Shitters, this sucks, man. This sucks. This completely fucking sucks. Thanks, guys. All right, well, we're not gonna go that way again. <laughs> Let's just stop and turn the key off. There's something about that intersection, it does not want to go through it. <laughs> it stops, it dies at that intersection every frickin' time. What the hell is going on here? I don't know. I'm gonna push it back to that side road there and then work on it a little bit more. Uh, we've let the bike sit for a little bit. I haven't actually tried to restart it. I put my gear back on and uh, uh, we're going to try to get it going again and then just kind of limp it back home. I've turned the idle up a little bit. Um, it's kind of weird that it just stalls at, uh, you know, when you're not... I mean, I was still running at a pretty good RPM. I wouldn't think it should stall. But uh, then, of course, when it stalls, it doesn't want to restart right away. So, uh, hey, we got a little ant on there. Get off of there, buddy. Um, so yeah, so let's give that a go and see and rather than going the route I wanted to go We're just gonna try to get it back home and figure out what's going on here. So That'll be what we give this a try to do. So let's see if she'll go. Let's hope Again she starts what the hell is going on here, okay kickstand up Gonna dilly dally around here too much. Got a little lucky with the traffic there. Alrighty. Try to open it up so you guys can see what she's doing. Like, what's with that? It runs good here now. What the hell? What the hell is going on, man? You know, one thing I have noticed, and I don't really think this should have any impact, but maybe it is having an impact, is that I think the uh, clutch needs... Uh, needs adjusting a little bit because when I put it you know when I pull the, the clutch lever in fully uh, for uh, you know out here from uh, let's just say from neutral to first you can feel it you know when I've got the clutch fully depressed and I put it in first gear you can still feel the bike jerk forward a little bit and maybe that's it and maybe it's dragging a little bit when you stop at a stoplight or a stop sign or something could that possibly be it but then why is it hard to start? Maybe it's hard to start because now you've uh, you've essentially stalled it and that's now got a little bit more fuel mixture left in the combustion chamber that otherwise would be. Uh, is that what's going on? Maybe my <laughs> I really don't know guys. I'm grasping at straws. I've got I've gone through this thing so many times, I really don't know what else to change. Um, I mean, you'd think if my float height was wrong, you'd think it wouldn't go. She goes. I mean, she's burning more fuel fast than she is slow, so how could that be fuel height? The pet cock is brand new. The f it's getting great fuel for sure. Uh, the tank is clean and been, you know, been sealed and caswelled. I mean, there's nothing here that should uh, be any issue at all. And yet she seems to run good now. So I don't know. Um, I 
I'm paranoid with every stop sign or stoplight I get now. As you can see, I need a lot of help on this one, so please do uh, leave a comment, okay? Please let, leave a comment and let me know what you think this might be. Uh, I really don't think, I mean, one of the things, some of the things that you guys might think of is, well, maybe it's a spark issue. Well, I, you know what? I don't think it is. I've checked the spark, and uh, on the good advi advice of a number of you, I checked the ohms readings on the stator, and for the life of me, I can't remember what they are while well, I'm riding the bike here, but. I looked them up and they're exactly in spec, like right in the middle of where the, the good is on those items. Uh, every time I've checked spark, I have good spark. I've tried uh, the trick of moving the spark plug wire around, thinking maybe there's an intermittent spark issue, no issue. But then if you think about it, uh, you know, wouldn't it just die equally randomly as I'm going straight down the road at speed, uh, rather than just at a stop sign or stoplight? So it's not, I think we can rule spark out. I really think we can. Uh, it's got the proper B8ES NGK spark plug in it, old school that is on obtainium now. Uh, gapped correctly. Um, so what the hell else could this be, man? I, I really don't know. Um, I am kind of wondering what that, uh, whether I'm actually stalling it out. Is that what's happening? Maybe I'm stalling the damn thing out. And maybe the fact it's stalled out is what keeps it from wanting to start up again because stalling it out means that it's got too, too rich a mixture in the combustion chamber. You know, I think I'm talking myself into that scenario. I think we need to, uh, won't do any harm. I think we need to uh, adjust the clutch. So we'll give that a go and see what happens. Anyways, guys, I'm getting pretty close to home here. Uh, not really well. I've got, what have I got? Five blocks to go. But, uh, but a bit of unexciting riding for you guys to watch. So I think this, is, this uh, video is long enough now. So I think we'll wrap this one up. Um, first off, I just want to thank you guys for those that are still watching. <laughs> Thanks so much for uh, watching my crazy video here. I really appreciate it. Um, you know, my, my channel is called Mad Tinkerman, and I am, uh, you know, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, as you can tell. So I really need the help. Uh, I'm just a tinkering guy. I'm no mechanic. So, uh, oh no, not a stoplight. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh, well, we'll see. Hopefully we get through this one. See if we can get it. I got her in the neutral. We'll try to keep the engine running nicely. Maybe that's the trick. Make sure you get her in neutral at the stops, at the, you know, at these things. Um, but anyways, um, see we get to the light here and then we'll continue on. You see how it, I don't know if you guys felt that, but she jerks forward in, uh, when I put it in the first gear. And I had the clutch fully depressed. So that needs to be adjusted. God, could that be what it is? Could that be what it is? I don't know. Anyways, as I was saying, let's wrap this one up, guys. Um, you know what would, I would really appreciate is comments. Let me know what is going on with this bike. You guys are way smarter than I am. Uh, as I mentioned, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I, I try really hard, but I follow directions really good. So if you guys got things I should test or try, let me know. Well, one of the other things I should mention is it's not compression either. I tested compression on this engine and it's an amazing 150 PSI, zero issue on compression. So zero issue on compression, zero issue on spark, as I mentioned. Um, yeah, I've mentioned all the things that I've done on it, but I think I've covered the bases enough for you guys to know, rule out some of the things that it might be. Um, and uh, anyways, uh, what I would really appreciate, guys, uh, leave a comment, let me know what's going on with this with the bike. And uh, please subscribe. I could really use some more subscribers. Um, subscriptions, if you don't know, uh, cost zero. They cost nothing. It's essentially just a, a bookmark that allows you to come back to my channel if you want to. 
uh, but it doesn't cost you anything and I would really appreciate it very very much uh, anyways guys we're gonna wrap this one up here and uh, yeah keep the rubber side down everybody and uh, have a good one cheers for now <laughs>